All righty. Hello, um, I'm Mike. I'm a developer from the UK. Um, I really like Docker. It makes me really, really happy. And I'm kind of just wanting to share this with everyone, um, mostly because it solved so many of my developer problems. Um, not perfectly, but good enough that it made me want to keep using it. Um, out of interest, just kind of throw up some emojis. Who has used Docker and kind of has a reasonable idea on it? You kind of, okay, cool. All right, cool. <clears throat> Sounds like I've got a good audience today. That is great. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So what are we going to cover? So I'm going to kind of tell you some stories about like what I'm trying to solve using Docker. I'm going to tell you a little bit, a, a little bit about what Docker is. I'm going to show you how to use Docker. I'm going to show you like what Docker composes and how it makes things a bit easier. And then we'll also go through some drawbacks. And I have, if we have time, I have some little bits of live demo um, if we want to risk that, but um, we'll see how we go. Cool. So what are we trying to solve? Like, why, why am I here today? Why am I telling you this? Um, I'm going to go through some of these problems where I think having Docker would have just solved these problems. So I have a true story. Um, I was working on an application a couple of years ago where when a developer would start, the first thing they'd do is do brew, install, Postgres. And that was fine for a while, except for we realized that every developer was running different versions of Postgres. This wasn't a bad thing until one day I, me, um, found a really nice new like little Postgres function in Postgres 13, which could do some stuff. And it worked on my machine. It worked in CI because CI was just installing the latest thing. And it almost got out to production and everyone was like, oh, this is, this is not good. So if we had been using uh, Docker, we could have all been using the exact same version of Postgres, which I think would have solved that problem. And it probably would have made us want to update our production version of Postgres to not be running version 10 compared to maybe version 13, which is uh, really good. And on a side note, if anyone ever like runs migrations between a team and the schema file changes, even though maybe the database is meant to look the same, maybe you're running different versions um, that kind of bit me again this week, and that was quite fun. Um, okay, another true story. A um, couple of years ago, I was a junior developer, quite happily setting, setting up apps. I had to, to open a readme. It had all these instructions saying, okay, run brew, install this, run brew, install that. And I was going through, and I was, I was really young, um, and quite know what I was doing. And it was just throwing these cryptic errors at me. And I was like, I do not know what's going on. And it was just a really terrible like onboarding experience where I think we could have done better. Um, I actually ended up like pretty much hiding in the toilet for like five minutes and being just like having to have, have to take a breather because I was like so embarrassed that as a junior dev, I couldn't set up this project I was going to be working on. Had we been using Docker, one, it would have been like one command to turn on and orchestrate the entire thing on my local machine. I wouldn't have had to go and install loads of stuff. And two, like all the packages that made for that little yeah. Docker image, so they would have just worked. They wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had to worry about update. Sorry, my legs just got off. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't have had to set update like a load of little bits. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, and finally, the other story I've got is my biggest fear. So has anyone ever been like asked to work on a language or an app where it's either really old or using like some language stuff you don't know and everyone throws some emojis up or, like yeah so we've all had this experience so i generally expect at some point someone's going to be like hey here's some language you've never tried before we want a tiny little change if you could just like make that one commit that would be wonderful um so yeah i had uh, that experience and yeah, so I was kind of thinking, hey, um, Docker could probably solve this problem. We could create an image which is specific for that little thing. I can get up and going. I don't have to worry about learning a language just to get going. I could make the change. I could get confident in the language. And then I can learn about the nitty gritty of setting it up like another day. Um, yeah, which is kind of exciting. So what is this Docker thing? Why am I telling you about it again? And um, what's the definition? So I, I couldn't find like a good definition online. Um, which didn't suddenly get really technical really, really fast. But um, this is the best example I could come up with. It was like the way I see Docker is it's kind of a little piece of software I install where I can download images 
and run their little virtual computers on my computer and they all can talk to each other. That's the best description I kind of had. Um, yeah, so there's also some terminology you're gonna constantly come up against, like uh, an image, which is kind of the thing we're gonna build, like a little snapshot of a computer, which we run, the container, the thing which runs the image, and Alpine Linux, which is the version of Linux, which is super tiny and perfect for running these little VMs in. They're about 50 meg or so per like to install Ruby. It's like, it's amazing and they're really lightweight. Um, they're awesome. So how do we use Docker? Um, so step one, you have to download this application and just go to their website, go download it. It's awesome. Once you install it, you kind of get a nice GUI application, which is going to tell you what you have installed, what you have going on, which is all quite exciting. Um, and you can see it does use a little bit of like a couple of gigabytes of space to download these images, but that's fine. Um, it gets really fun though, because it also adds a little thing to terminal um, where you can run all these little commands and terminals to get things going. So let's jump into that. So you can just run Ruby, you don't have to install it. You don't have to worry about anything. You can just run docker run dash dash rm dash dash it. Rm means uh, remove it after like we're done with it. It means like, let me just kind of work in terminal to it. And then Ruby version 3.0, I guess you're kind of familiar with what that is. And then dash dash our plan, which is like saying, okay, give me, give me the Ruby, uh, give me an image which contains Ruby all set up ready to go give it to me on that Alpine image, which is really tiny. It's about 50 meg. And then you can just be doing Ruby in your terminal. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's cool. This, this was cool. This, this made me really happy like to do this to like someone who struggles to set up Ruby and just be like, bam, here we go. Let's just jump into coding Ruby. That's cool. Then once you're like, you've got to that point and you can play around with Docker, we can do something a bit more complicated. We can set up a Docker file. And these are pretty much instructions for building that computer snapshot for running our app. So this is vaguely what you might want to use for um, a Rails app. That's You're probably going to do something a bit more complicated, but for when you're getting started, this will be fine. So you can all probably guess vaguely what's going on here, where it's saying, hey, OK, I want to start with that Ruby image, that thing with Ruby set up, like ready to go. I'm gonna install some extra things. So I want yarn in this case to make Rails work. So I've just kind of added that in. And then I've kind of made a little directory. I've like copied some files into it. And then I've done bundle, I've done yarn. And I've just said, hey, okay, let, what, when you run this container, the command to get everything going is Rails server. Um, so if I was to quickly run this in a self-contained way, assuming it didn't need like Postgres or anything, it would just turn on and work. And that's again, really cool. And I could, give this image to like a friend of mine and they could run my little app, which is really cool. They don't have to worry about installing Rails or getting Yarn working. They could they could just run, I could tag this as like my fancy app and they could be running it, which is, it's cool. Um, I was really excited about that. Um, so here's the commands to kind of like play around with like building stuff and whatnot. So I mentioned we have that Docker file. If you wanna go through and build it, you just do Docker build, you tag it, you give it a name and you say, hey, okay, do dot, that's like build the one in the current directory. And it will go off and build it. And then you can run that file once it's done. You can push it to Docker Hub and you can your friends can pull it down. And it's ah, it's really exciting. Um that that's I'm really excited of what we can do with that. Um and then let's talk about Docker Compose. So this this is complicated. Like no one can remember this. I can't remember this most of the time. Um, but Docker Compose makes it even easier. It's like a little a little bit of terminal syntactical sugar. It also connects to VS Code, and it will pretty much let you define what you need to run to get your app working on your local machine. So in this case, I've said, hey, um, I need Postgres, and I need my app, and I need it to be on these ports, and I want to share the data here, here, and here. And it will just, you can just type Docker Compose up and it'll just go download these images and turn these things on and do all the stuff to get going. And it's, that's really cool. Um, like there's no like brew install anything. There's like no worrying about configuration. Like assuming you've set up your Docker file correctly, once you've got to that point, it'll just work the same. It's like, it's exciting. Plus you can also specify the exact dot version, which is wonderful. Um, and also like I was asked to do some PHP work uh, a couple of weeks ago and I didn't want to touch WordPress. So I'm not sure if anyone else would want to do that. Um, 
and I found out there was a WordPress image. So I was just like, right, instead of getting WordPress installed on my, my local machine and working, I'm just going to go use that Docker image and I'm going to sync that one folder I know I need in version control. And it just did everything. And I was like, oh, this is, this is exciting. This is like, I'm excited for what that could mean for like other people in the same situation where maybe they don't know Rails or Ruby. And we could just be like, hey, here's the Rails image. It's got almost everything you need. We're going to sync some files. This will be all, all amazing stuff. Cool. Um, and yeah, this is kind of what it looks like when you turn it on. You just do Docker Compose up, it turns on everything. And yeah, there's, there's your there's your Rails app ready to go. And you can also run like commands within those containers as well. So if I just want to run just the web thing, which was just my app, maybe not Postgres, um, I can do that. If I want to run Rails C, I have to use a bit of a different command and say, hey, go to the web container and go run Rails C. So it's a bit tricky, but you know, it's there. And if I just want to turn on Postgres, I just say, hey, only turn on Postgres, which, yeah, nice, good stuff. And um, I normally use Vim, but um, if you use VS Code, it has this really cool little add-on where you don't even have to touch Terminal if you don't want to, which, again, is like, I was very excited about this. I, I was pairing with a junior dev, and they were like, okay, cool, I'm going to turn on Docker. And they just clicked the button, and I was just like, oh, that's, that's nice. I, I like that. That's, they don't have to know about anything but under the hood, as long as I configure it right, we're, we're good to go. Um, drawbacks. So, yeah, um, it's not perfect. Uh, if anyone has ever used Docker, they'll know it uses a lot of resources on Mac OS X um, or Mac OS even. Uh, it's, yeah, um, it's way better on Ubuntu. Um, I normally just shell into an Ubuntu machine sometimes during work because I'm just like, I need, I have to run my browser and Docker and a few other things and then suddenly nothing works anymore. Um, and obviously running running containers within your machine isn't as fast as, you know, running it natively. Um, there is like a nice little trick you can do sometimes, like once once people are a bit confident uh, with Docker, I kind of say, okay, maybe just use it to turn on the services. So Postgres and Redis and those other things, and then run your app natively, the Ruby stuff natively, if you're not doing anything special package wise, which is cool. Um, and also, like I mentioned in the screenshot that like it uses a lot of disk space. It really does. Um, so you need a nice big hard drive to really get the most of it. Um, otherwise, you'd be constantly printing stuff. Um, and it isn't like a silver bullet as well. Um, one of my buddies, Nikki T, um, he works at Forum. Um, he was doing a, a Twitch session and like this randomly he threw out that, oh, it works on my Docker because they had lots of configurations. So yeah, um, it isn't like a silver bullet to fix everything, but I like it. All right, that's that's me. I do have like a little bit of like a couple of little projects I want to show off where I've used it. If everyone's kind of curious about that, uh, want to see those? Okay, cool. Um, let me just close that out. Okay, so I have a little project called the Rails Starter Kit. If you want to just copy these in, um, it's literally a Docker file set up perfectly for Rails 3 and Ruby 6 with all the little quirks to make it super fast. All you've got to do is copy the Docker file and the Docker compose.yaml, and you can just get this thing going. Um, and it's something I'm working on. I'd love like contributors and stuff like that to kind of help me out um, and make it like even better for everyone. So. Cool. Um, that is me done on that. Uh, I'm Mike Rogers there on Twitter. Please let me know if you'd like this and it was helpful. Um, has anyone got any questions or anything? I'm going to stop sharing just so I can see everyone. Um, let's jump in. Cool. Oh, there was chat. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Mike. That was, uh, I, I know I've used it in the past as well. And we had a similar thing with it. It works on my Docker. Uh, I know we had the, the similar similar issues, um, but it also solved a bunch of problems too. So it's certainly a certainly a um, useful in some places, not useful in others. So yeah, thanks. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Mike, do do you or anyone you know have used uh, Docker on an M1 Mac to try and uh, negate this these performance issues um i haven't <laughs> i i hear it, it is working now on the m1s like they got it working and they solved that problem um but i'm not sure what it's like um i know that facebook 
what they do is they just have a virtual machine. Everyone just SSHs and does their work there, which kind of gets around that massively. Like you just gets rid of all the problem completely, which I think is quite a cool solution. And I'm kind of wondering about whether that's going to be the future for Docker, but um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, sorry. That's If you're running an M1, maybe you're going to have a bad time, um, but may, maybe not in a couple of weeks, who knows? Um, for your Docker Compose uh, configs, do you run a lot of applications when you use them? I'm just curious because we had a few and it got a bit crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like actual applications, so I normally run one at a time. I don't like run like five in parallel, <laughs> um, but I use the exact same template for everything now. I've like kind of almost standardized across it. The only thing changing is the version numbers. And um, I've had a pretty good time. Like I think I've got like 10 or 20 apps or something on my local machine, all kind of ready to go under, under Docker if I need to. And I just kind of turn them on as I go, um, which works really, really well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Nick. Go on, Nick. Um, one, I, I guess I'm glad to see I'm not the only dev who at one point was so stressed out that I had to uh, retreat to the retreat to the, the toilet. Um, but my, uh, my question is, is there anything like, do you feel that uh, Docker is fairly mature at this stage or are there any features or functionality that um, you're hoping they will implement soon or that is on the, on the radar? Oh, they could they could make things 10x better if they really like had the had the drive, I think. But I've I, I tried it initially like five years ago and I was a bit like, oh, this isn't that great. I came back to it this year and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Um I think it's kind of hit like a nice maturity where the API you the commands aren't really changing. The performance is pretty reasonable. Um it does kind of bite you every now and again. I'd love it if they I would love it if Apple just came out and just was like, hey, yep, we're we're gonna solve this for them and make it perfect compared to like what it is on Linux. But um there you go. But overall I'm like really, really, really happy with it. Um I think the only thing what would make me happier if like kind of Docker files became like a standard and another tool came in just to kind of Cut, cut the fat for specifically for Mac or for Windows people. Um, I would also love it if not sure if anyone's got time, if someone could point me towards like a perfect Docker image where maybe it only shares like the migration DBs and the app folder and everything else is just extracted away. That's like my happy place right now. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for letting me, letting me talk about how much I love Docker. <laughs>